By the early 1990s, America's city streets hummed with diesel. The old days of electric trolley buses, those quiet machines gliding beneath a forest of overhead wires, were long gone in most places. Almost. In Dayton, Ohio, and San Francisco, California, the wires never came down. City planners argued, accountants protested, and mechanics groaned over aging fleets, but both cities refused to surrender their silent workhorses. Why? The answer was part geography, part economy, and a good measure of plain old common sense. Dayton nearly pulled the plug in 1988, but a closer look changed minds. On its steep hills and icy winters, the trolley bus was unmatched. Steady traction, no diesel smoke, no engine roar. Federal environmental grants helped tip the scales, rewarding zero-emission transit just as clean air laws tightened nationwide. In the end, it was cheaper to keep the wires than to start over. San Francisco faced the same logic. A diesel coach might grind and puff its way up Stockton Street, but a 600-volt trolley climbed it like it wasn't even there. The system already existed, the power came from local hydro plants, and the city's famous fog didn't choke on exhaust. So while most of America went diesel crazy, two cities kept faith in electricity and proved that sometimes progress means knowing what not to abandon. Keeping the wires was one thing, finding new buses to run under them was another. By the mid-1990s, the United States had no domestic trolleybus builder left. So when Dayton and San Francisco went shopping for replacements, they faced a strange question. Where on earth do you buy a trolley bus in the age of diesel? The answer came from an unlikely place, Plzen, in the Czech Republic. Skoda, a company with decades of experience in electric transit, stepped forward with a proven design. But there was one obstacle, Buy America. Federal Transit Administration rules required that any vehicle purchased with federal funds be assembled on U.S. soil and contain a minimum percentage of American-made components. To clear that hurdle, Skoda joined forces with a small California engineering firm called AAI Corporation. Together they formed Electric Transit Incorporated, ETI, in 1994, a joint venture, Skoda holding 65%, AAI 35%. The idea was simple. Build the electrical heart in Europe, ship the shells across the Atlantic, and finish the buses at an American facility in Hunt Valley, Maryland, under full FTA inspection and certification. It was a legal dance of bolts and paperwork. European soul, American passport. That clever partnership gave Skoda's trolley buses a green light into the U.S. market, and set the stage for one of the strangest East meets West success stories in modern transit history. Once ETI had its legal footing, it was time to build something that could actually roll down an American street. Skoda brought the soul, the proven 14TR trolleybus design it had been perfecting across Europe since the early 1980s. But to survive in the US, that Czech body needed some serious American tailoring. At its heart, the 14TR was a rugged, monocoque steel shell, light yet strong, with a high floor and three wide pneumatic doors. Underneath, a Skoda DC traction motor delivered between 100 and 120 kilowatts of power from a 600-volt direct current system, fed through dual overhead poles. Power went straight to the rear axle through a single-stage reduction gear, a simple, efficient setup that gave it smooth takeoff and reliable hill climbing. But American standards were a different language. Federal regulations demanded a 102-inch body width, up from the narrower European spec. ADA accessibility required a wheelchair lift, which Skoda engineers relocated from the rear door to the front to fit U.S. boarding habits. Lighting, turn signals, and braking systems were all redesigned to meet DOT and FTA safety codes. The first three prototypes, designated 14TRE, served as test beds, helping ETI and Dayton mechanics fine-tune electrical harnesses, climate controls, and suspension settings for local roads. 
The production batch became the 14TRE2, slightly heavier, but far more refined. When San Francisco later ordered its own fleet, the trolleybus evolved again. The 14TRSF featured uprated traction motors, reinforced suspension for steep grades, and a unique companion, the 15TRSF, a 54-foot articulated version built for crushing commuter loads on Market Street. No computers, no hybrid trickery, just direct current, steel, and craftsmanship. Every bolt carried a touch of Europe, but every light, step, and lift was made to satisfy America's toughest transit inspectors. It wasn't the prettiest bus on the block, but it was built the old-fashioned way, solid, simple, and serviceable. A Czech heart under an American skin, ready to prove that good engineering doesn't need translation. Once the blueprints were signed off, the real work began, turning paper contracts into living machines. Dayton's order came first, 57 units in total, including three pilot coaches numbered 9601 through 9603, built in 1995 to 96 for field testing. The remaining 54 production buses numbered 9801 to 9854 arrived between 1998 and 1999. Every arrival at the Longworth Street Depot felt like a small event. Crews trained on site with Skoda and ETI technicians, learning the quirks of the new traction system, the maintenance cycle of contactors and resistors, even how to string switch the poles without snapping a line. Within months, the Czech newcomers were running regular service on routes one through five, gliding past the same hills that once challenged Dayton's old flyers. San Francisco's order was larger, 240 of the 14 TRSF and 32 of the longer 15 TRSF articulated versions delivered between 2001 and 2004. Those silver and blue buses quickly became a fixture on Market and Stockton streets, their twin poles tracing bright arcs through the fog. Two cities, two landscapes, one common rhythm. The quiet hum of new electric power rolling out from the depot, ready to earn its place in everyday American life. For all their foreign roots, the Skodas settled into American service like they'd been born here. Drivers praised their instant torque and quiet pull, perfect for rush hour climbs and downtown stops just feet apart. In Dayton's logs, breakdowns were rare. The mean time between failures easily doubled that of the old flyer E800s, and the electric cost per mile came in well below any diesel equivalent. Routine maintenance was simple. Check the contactors, inspect the pole shoes, grease the suspension, clean the resistor grids. The city's shop crews soon knew them inside and out. But nothing lasts forever, not even good engineering. When Electric Transit Incorporate shut its doors in 2004, the supply chain vanished overnight. ETI had been the middleman for every part that carried a Skoda stamp, everything from traction motors to door valves. Without it, each replacement order had to be negotiated across an ocean. Lead time stretched from weeks to months. By the late 2000s, some components simply couldn't be sourced at all. Dayton's maintenance teams resorted to cannibalizing retired coaches to keep the rest alive, swapping out brake cylinders, pole bases, even dashboard gauges. The same story echoed in San Francisco, where a few 15 TRSFs were parked permanently for lack of key electrical relays. Still, the buses kept rolling. With regular inspections and a little ingenuity, many 14 TRE units surpassed 20 years of service, a feat nearly unheard of in modern transit. They proved that a simple DC system could outlast any computer-controlled drivetrain, as long as someone cared enough to maintain it. But every fleet has its sunset. By the mid-2000s, parts were dwindling, corrosion was creeping, and newer dual-mode hybrids promised off-wire freedom. The Czech trolleys had done their duty, and done it well. The question now wasn't whether they had failed, but whether the industry had moved on without them. 
Ask any driver who spent a shift behind the wheel of a 14 TRE, and they'll smile before they answer. The steering was firm but forgiving, the throttle immediate, a smooth surge of electric pull with no lag, no gear changes, no diesel groan. On Dayton's snow-covered grades, the Skoda felt glued to the pavement, climbing like a mountain goat at 20 miles an hour without slipping a tire. Inside, passengers noticed the difference too. The cabin was quiet enough to hold a conversation. Instead of vibration and fumes, there was only the soft hum of current and the faint whistle of the poles tracing wire. The three-door layout sped up boarding, while the front-mounted wheelchair lift, a new feature for American riders, made accessibility simple and dignified. Old-timers remembered the flyers rattling and coughing up every hill. The 14 TRE glided past as if floating on air. Even in San Francisco, where buses faced brutal inclines and heavy loads, the 14 TRSF proved solid, sure-footed, and remarkably calm under pressure. Compared with today's battery trolleys, it lacked the digital polish, but not the personality. For drivers and riders alike, the Skoda was exactly what public transit should feel like. Steady, familiar, and quietly alive beneath the wires. For two decades, the Skodas became part of the scenery, so ordinary that most folks stopped noticing them. Until the end came, when Dayton's final 14 TRE pulled into the depot on an autumn night in October 2019, crowds lined the street to wave it home. Some had ridden it to school, others to work. A few had driven it themselves. That night, as Coach 9809 rolled in under the humming wires one last time, the city seemed to pause. Cameras flashed. Mechanics leaned from the bay doors. It wasn't just another retirement, it was the close of an era. That very bus, Dayton number 9809, now rests at the Illinois Railway Museum, preserved as the last operational ETI Skoda in the United States. In San Francisco, sister coach number 5538 was set aside for local preservation, a reminder of the days when electric traction still sang through the fog. These weren't museum pieces in their time, they were working class heroes. But when the last poles came down, their legacy didn't fade. They had bridged the gap between the old wired trolleys and the new battery assisted hybrids like the Gillig slash Kipe dual mode coaches that replaced them. Today's fleets whisper along on lithium packs, free to roam beyond the wire. Yet their lineage runs straight back to Skoda's sturdy 14 TRE a machine that proved electric transit could be both practical and poetic. In a world chasing new power sources, it left behind something even rarer, quiet dignity in motion. The end of the 14th TRE left more than photographs. It left lessons worth remembering. From a small Czech workshop to the streets of Ohio and California, this little trolley taught America three things about how to build and sustain real transit. First, a foreign partnership only lasts as long as its parts supply. ETI's shutdown in 2004 proved that even the best design can falter without a long-term commitment to maintenance and logistics. Second, adapting a design for America means knowing what to change and what to keep. The wider 102-inch body, the ADA lift, and the DOT-compliant lighting weren't compromises. They were what made the 14 TRE feel right at home. And third, durability is value. 20 plus years of reliable service wasn't just a mechanical achievement. It was social return on investment. Every mile those trolleys ran saved fuel, reduced noise, and gave passengers a cleaner, calmer ride. In the end, the 14 TRE was never built for headlines. It was built to work, and it did, quietly, faithfully, and long enough to prove a point. Did you ever ride one of these electric workhorses? Like if you still remember the hum of the wire on a cold Ohio morning. Subscribe to see what replaced it. The next chapter. How the J4500 took over America.